Hello everyone and welcome. We are inside of my 2016 Subaru Crosstrek, but we're not here to talk about the 2016. Instead, we're going to be talking about the 2018, which I recently was able to test in the Black Hills of South Dakota. And the 2018 Crosstrek is pretty much better in every way. So in this video, we're going to be talking about 10 different improvements of the 2018 versus the generation which I am currently driving. Now, starting with the transmission, Subaru is now offering a six-speed manual transmission in the 2018 Crosstrek. Crosstrek. I have the five-speed manual uh, and they've made some significant improvements to it. Not only shift feel, but uh, gears one and two are shorter, so you've got better acceleration. Gear three is the same. Gear four and five are more aggressive, so you get better acceleration in gears four and five. And then you have a sixth gear, which is taller than this Crosstrek's fifth gear, so you can get better efficiency on the highway. So the transmission pretty much better in every way. It shifts better, it feels better, it's quicker. Um, everything about it is an improvement. And part of the reason why I bought this generation is I assumed that Subaru would be dropping the manual transmission for the next generation. They did drop it for Europe, only the CVT is offered in Europe, but for North America they did continue to offer a manual, which I love that they did. Uh, small regret, small regret, no big deal, I do love this car. Now the CVT has also seen an improvement. They've widened the ratio for it so it can get more aggressive, shorter gearing than the previous generation and it can also get taller, more efficient gearing than the previous generation. So, you know, either way you go, uh, they have improved the transmission. And honestly, I enjoyed driving the CVT. Because there's a manual transmission offered, I certainly didn't buy it. But uh, I could, you know, understand those who would want the CVT. It's honestly a solid CVT transmission. Uh, it does a good job with acceleration. Um, and I think it does a better job than the previous generation uh, Crosstrek with the CVT. The second thing we're going to talk about is the engine. And there aren't, you know, huge changes here, but there are some improvements. So it's still a two liter box boxer engine, 80% new construction, 26 pounds lighter, it's got direct injection and a higher compression ratio, but uh, you know, from a power standpoint, not really any changes. Exact same torque, though you do get that torque a little bit earlier on, 145 pound feet, and you know, four more horsepower, 152 horsepower uh, at 6,000 RPM, so you also get peak power a little bit earlier. The bigger change, I think, with the engine is the fact that after 5,000 RPM uh, in this current generation uh, Crosstrek, the torque just dies very quickly. And they've improved that in the newer Crosstrek where the torque remains a bit flatter after 5,000 RPM. So if you are ringing it out all the way, you know, to the top end of that gear, you do continue to have more power. So while on paper, you know, it looks very similar, uh, not much of a power increase, you do have a better curve overall than this vehicle's engine. Is it quick? No, it is still a pretty slow car. So it's not like you're gonna get in it and be excited with the acceleration. Uh, but, you know, we'll get into efficiency later and it does excel in that area. The next thing I wanted to talk about is the ride quality because they have changed the suspension setup uh, for the Crosstrek, the new Crosstrek, and it's also on Subaru's new global platform, so a shared architecture for their new models. And this new platform uh, has, has really made some significant improvements. What I was very surprised by is there's both less body roll and a more comfortable ride. So, you know, they've, they've done kind of this incredible thing with the suspension where it's a very smooth riding car. The new vehicle is, uh, you know, a significant improvement in ride quality over the generation which I'm driving and yet it also corners flatter and so that's pretty impressive that you know it's uh it's sportier in a sense, but also more comfortable. And you know, I think a lot of that can be attributed to the new global architecture, uh, where they've really built this vehicle from the ground up, again, completely redesigned, uh, and you definitely see the improvement in the ride quality. Now, number four is safety. And once again, this is mainly attributed to that new global platform. The rigidity of this car has just been significantly improved. So front lateral rigidity up 90%, front suspension up 70% in rigidity, torsional rigidity up 70%, rear subframe rigidity up 100%, crash energy absorption up 40%. Uh, so overall, you know, it's just a safer vehicle. Now, number five, on top of the suspension riding smoother, the interior is also significantly quieter. It's very noticeable the difference between the two generations. They've got a quieter HVAC system, so your AC doesn't isn't quite as loud. They've got thicker glass all the way around, and then they, of course, have this new and improved uh, architecture, the whole chassis design, which is more rigid, less vibration. And so as a result, result, the interior is significantly more quiet and that's nice. 
Now, paired with that quiet interior, you now get a better audio system. So previously, they didn't really offer that nice of an audio system in the Crosstrek. Now they actually have a pretty decent setup. You've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, significantly better speakers. My one gripe with it is that they only offer it on the upper trim levels, and so you can't get a manual transmission matched with good audio. And it seems kind of crazy to me that, you know, enthusiasts probably like things like manual transmissions, and they probably also like good quality audio systems. I opted for the upgraded speakers in this. They're mediocre. They're not, you know, that great. The new audio system in the new Crosstrek, the limited version, is quite good, uh, but you can't get it with a manual transmission, and I think that's a bit of a disappointment. Though it is nice that it has it, and you still do have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, if, you know, you do get the lower end, lower trim models with uh, the manual transmission. Moving on to number seven, we're talking about interior space. So they've actually increased the wheelbase of the vehicle by 1.2 inches. And in doing this, they've also increased the rear leg room by 1.1 inches. You also have more headroom in the rear seat. So the rear seat's already pretty spacious in this 2016 that I'm in. Uh, an improvement, you know, plenty of leg room in the 2018 models. They've also significantly increased your hip room in both the front and the back. And the interior volume has been increased by 3.4 cubic feet. Eat. So overall, it's just a much more spacious interior. They have also improved rear cargo space. You've got 3.4 additional cubic feet with the rear seats folded down versus the outgoing model. And you also have flatter uh, sides. So you have a wider entry into the rear of the vehicle than previously where it kind of bulges in and it takes out some space if you put some larger objects in the back. I have struggled to put a mountain bike in the back here. It's nice to be able to lock your bike up inside, uh, but closing it and getting Getting it through that hatch was a bit difficult, and if the sides were wider, it would have been easier to slide it in. Now, number nine, we're going to talk about efficiency and range. Now, the CVT's highway mileage is unchanged at 33 miles per gallon, but that's better than any all-wheel drive competitor in the segment. So, you know, they were at the top, they've remained at the top, and one of the other things they did is they increased the size of the fuel tank, uh, not too much, but a little bit giving them a highway uh, range of about 550 miles, which is incredible. It's one of the things I like about this Crosstrek, even with the smaller tank and the worst fuel economy with the manual transmission, it still has a tremendous range. 550 miles of the CVT uh, is incredible, and it's nice to have that flexibility in range uh, with the vehicle. If you want to go on a long road trip, things like that, and not worry about stops. And finally, we get to number 10, and this is just touching on the headlights. They do offer now LED headlights in the limited trim, and they are steering responsive headlights, so they will illuminate into the corner as you turn in. They also do offer a high beam assist, so it will turn your high beams on and off automatically if you do have eyesight. So Subaru's adaptive cruise control, it'll use the cameras, look for cars ahead, and automatically turn those headlights off. Uh, so cool that they've put LED headlights in it. That's a nice touch. Uh, and you know, overall, the vehicle is just for its category. I mean, this is the reason why I bought it. It does a lot of things really well. It gets great fuel economy. It has a ton of cargo space. It has 8.7 inches of ground clearance, the best in its category. Uh, it's got, you know, space for rear passengers, uh, fuel efficient, as I've mentioned, you know, all around offers a manual transmission with all wheel drive. A lot of the competitors, you know, don't offer all wheel drive and a manual transmission. So it, it kind of sweeps the board as far as the things that I was looking at in a car. And that's why I ended up getting it. It's boring. I don't think anyone will tell you that it's a thrilling vehicle. It's slow. You know, it doesn't have much power, but it's efficient. And that's kind of the trade off and it's very capable. So as a boring daily driver, if if you want something you know practical and great and that does everything it's intended to do well this car does it if you're looking for a thrill you know the Crosstrek uh, the added four horsepower did not create that change but thank you guys for watching and if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below